Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's um, video, I've been getting a lot of comments about like, how is it possible to like, I've been getting a lot of comments about funding. And most of the time we know that like PhD is really heavily funded, especially in the US. And the good thing is that you actually also don't need a bachelor's degree. So in this video, I have with me Ebenezer Ediafo who actually did a direct PhD from his um, bachelor's. He's going to share with us his story, how he was able to do it. And also the good news that like in the next week after this video, I've, I'm collecting a list of universities that you could apply for with your bachelor's. So if you are somebody who plans on doing a PhD, there might really not be any need to go through the master's and go through the PhD because you get more chances with a PhD. So Ebenezer, kindly introduce yourself so that we could start the session. And thanks for agreeing to do this with me. I mean, there's a great job you're doing, so I'm happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. My name is Ebenezer Diafo. I'm a middleware engineer with LPL Financial. I attended Clemson University, and I'm really excited to be here today. Okay, and thank you. So my first question is like, tell us like, how did it go from your bachelor's to your PhD? How did you even know this was possible? And why did you decide to take this path? Right. Uh, so this master's PhD, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like for me, uh, my brother is my mentor and then he did this journey before me. Mm -hmm. So he was like the most important part. He made me aware of this opportunity. He was the one actually pushing me into this. So like, I'm really grateful to him for this. So yeah, that's how I knew about it. And I actually tried to apply for undergrad here, mm -hmm. but that didn't work out. So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna focus on uh, my time in tech, make sure I have the good grades so that I can come here for grad school. So that's how it started for me. And then as far back as uh, second year, third year, I was actually going to there. American embassy counseling sessions, like going for their info sessions just to see what I needed to do. And I started planning to see, okay, these are the requirements for the application. You're gonna have to write an SOP. So start looking at sample SOPs. What are people seeing in their SOPs? And I'm like, oh, they wanna they show like they have some leadership roles and other stuff which I didn't have at the time. So then I'm like, okay, now I need to join some clubs. I need to get some leadership positions. So it's like stuff like that. I was always, uh, because like I had information, I was trying to see what I wanted to write about. I wanted to become that person. So that was it for me. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Um, let me piggyback. You said you wanted to become that person. So what person did you want to become? And exactly what did you do to become that person to increase your chances of getting into grad school at Clemson University? Okay. So like, uh, I realized I wanted to be, I needed the funding. So I wanted to be a teaching assistant. So that I was like, okay, I need to get into uh, a TA role after school during my national service. So one of that was one of the key things. I started talking to professors even before I graduated about that. And then the other thing was, I realized for my SOP, I wanted to say something about leadership. So I needed to get into a leadership position. So I started, because prior to that, I didn't really care about it. But then when I realized I was going to need that, because it's a whole package. It's not just about grades. You want to show like, yeah, a well-rounded person. So then that helps. So when I looked at sample SOPs, those were things that people were saying. So that's one of the things I started working on. So I joined a club and then I actually became the president. Nice. So I could write in my SOP. Oh, okay, okay, that's great. So the two things you did was you ensured you had good grades and you also took like extracurricular activities. And was it only Clemson you applied to or you applied to other places? Uh, I think like the best thing is you apply to at least four schools. Oh, okay. Uh, at what least schools, four schools, yeah. What schools did you apply to and were all of them for bachelors to PhD? Which ones did you get in? Which ones didn't you get in? And how did you finally decide on Clemson? Yeah. So like I was saying, the best thing is to apply for school for schools. I apply to just Clemson. Oh, okay. Okay. So and don't take that advice. That's <laughs> bad. But then fortunately for me it worked out. Okay. Yeah. And did you know anybody there or you just did direct application? 
I did a direct application. So for me, ASOS, so with grad school, it's about a program you want to study. So the program led me to Clemson. I started researching about the program and schools that offered it. And Clemson was one of the top schools. I was looking at computational mathematics and Clemson was one of the schools that had a separate department for computational mathematics. And that was like also funding opportunity, which is very important for me. Okay. So those were, that? yeah. What was the funding package? What did you get? Uh, so it was the assistantship. So I was a teaching assistant and I was getting my fees waived and I was receiving stipend. Oh, okay. okay. Which That's... was supporting, yeah. And how long was the PhD? Like the bachelor's so they... PhD, how long was it? So that was five to six years. So it was five years, mm -hmm. they were hoping you finish. But then if you needed an external year, then they could extend it for one more year. Okay. And, and then yeah. in special circumstances, they are able to extend it to seven years, but that's like really special circumstances. Oh, okay. So if yeah. after the seventh year, not done what happens, you get kicked out? <laughs> I, I, I don't know anyone who has waited for seven years. Usually before the seventh year, if you see it's not working out, you probably leave. But yeah, you also have the option to get a master's on route to okay. your PhD. So after getting your master's, if you decide you want to pursue another program, that's actually what I did. I did not complete the PhD. So uh, after four years, I had my master's and I had completed a PhD coursework and I transferred into industrial engineering, also in Clemson. Oh, so you did, you did your master's for four years. Why, why is that so long? The oh, I did. I No, I finished the master's in two years, not four years. And then oh. I was pursuing the PhD. So I did oh. that for an extra two years. And after completing the PhD coursework, oh. I wasn't making the progress I wanted. So I oh. moved into industrial engineering. Oh. So it's so even like even when you go for the master's, like when you go for the PhD route, once you're done yeah. with your master's, you could be like, no, I don't want this. And you can stop and you get your master's and move on to somewhere else. Is that possible? Yeah, that's correct. And what happens to your funding? Like, is it, Does it affect your funding or no, it has no bearing to that? Uh, so when you're moving into it, so when I moved from math, I moved to industrial engineering. So then the math department is not going to sponsor you anymore. Now mm -hmm. the industrial engineering departments are the ones who are going to sponsor you. And, and, no finish, and no. when you, yeah, so with the industrial engineering, I went in for a PhD, but then I stopped at a master's again, and then I, I'm now working, so I left. Okay, oh. so, yeah. So just because you went for a, master, a PhD doesn't mean you necessarily have to do it. Like, once you get your master's, you could be like, okay, I don't want, I don't want to continue anymore. And yeah, but you I mean, if you have other opportunities, you take it. Oh, okay, okay. But the master's is like two years. Or even when you exceed it, you can be like, so you have a master's in math, computational mathematics and a master's in industrial engineering, if I understand. Yes. Correctly. Okay, that's impressive. And um, do you Thank think you. this route is, why did you decide to take this route, if I may ask? What was the thought process behind it? So at the beginning, as you mentioned, the PhD gives you more funding opportunities. And that's hundred percent correct. So that was like the main reason why I went in for the PhD. And then I also wanted a PhD. I wanted to like go into academia, and that was going to be my best chance. So having a PhD makes it like that's like your best chance is going to academia. That has changed now, but then coming in, that was like my top process. And which is more easier to get in? A BSc to a PhD or a BSc to master's to PhD? Which one is more easier? Uh, a BSc to one? PhD. Okay. Is there any reason behind because, that? Mm -hmm. uh, so professors want to have someone who is going to be there for a long time. They want to sponsor you. I mean, when you come in, you're going to need some training. So they don't want to train you. And then after a year, you, you leave. So, but then if there's the guarantee that you're going to be there for a longer time, so they know, okay, if we train this guy, we are going to benefit from this person for four to five years. Then they're like, okay, this is good. We want it. So yeah, it's 
better for them to invest in someone who is staying for a PhD than someone who is staying for a master's. Okay, that's great. And um, did you have prior research experience? Like, did you have like any articles before you got? No, I didn't. Okay, that's good. And um, that's good to know. And um, do you know anything that made you stand out for your application to get selected? Like, do you do you think maybe there was anything specific that made you an ideal candidate to be selected? Right. I think the uh, teaching experience helped. Uh, because I did my service with KNHC as a teaching assistant. I think that helped because uh, I was coming in as a, on a teaching assistantship okay. funding. So having that experience helped. And then the leadership role that I was talking about, like that was something that uh, when I talked to the department chair, that was something that he mentioned. So I think that also helped. And of course, grades and GRE score, all those are useful too. Okay, what did you graduate with? Uh, I graduated with a first class. And is it only first class people that can do this or other people can? Oh, so it's a total package. So it's not just about your grades. It's okay. not just about teaching experience. It's the total package. First class helps, of course, but then it's not like the only requirements. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, thanks, thanks for sharing your story. It was really succinct and I'm sure other people could follow through. So I'm going to, we are going to end the session. And um, could you give us some tips for people who want to do this route? And if you advise people to take that route? Uh, my first tip is keep listening to Barbara. <laughs> thank you. That's, thank like, you. <laughs> that's the first tip because you're doing a great job. And then the other thing is uh, use all the resources that you can use. And it's going to be a long process. So give yourself the time to do it. Start planning early. And then if you didn't get a chance to plan early, it's never too late. You can still do it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for agreeing to do this with me. And as I said from the beginning, in my next video, I'm going to give a list of universities that offer this option from your direct BSc to PhD. And you could look at it and you could start your application. So um, till we meet again. Bye.